Have you ever been certain your telephone would ring in the next 10 seconds? Or have you ever walked down a strange street and had the feeling that you knew what lay beyond the unturned corner? Yes? Then you've had a brief encounter with the world of the unknown. You are ready for the actual human experience that follows. Helen Mason, more dead than alive. She's been this way for three weeks now. A cipher, a blank, a waxen image of life. Hearing nothing, seeing nothing, asking nothing. Not a sound has passed her lips. Not even a sob. Nor has she shed one tear. For Helen Mason has completely withdrawn from reality, hiding from a fact that is too terrible for her to accept. If it goes on this way much longer, she will almost certainly die of grief. But at the same moment, in the neighboring town of Weinstock, 10 miles away, a 12-year-old girl is dying. I'm sorry. Mama? Mama? Lori? Doctor, doctor! I don't understand it. What? What's happened? I've treated hundreds of cases of scarlet fever. Hundreds. But up to now, I've been sure there, there was no hope. What is it, Doctor? Heart, pulse, lungs, normal. Normal as if... I just don't understand it. You mean she's going to be all right? I just don't understand it. Oh, Laurie, baby. You're going to be all right? My mama. Where's my mama? Just weak, still very confused. She's been through a great deal. I want to see her. Doctor, doctor. It's, it's just the fever. Just the fever. But she didn't recognize me. She's gonna be all right. Oh, George. same day, when the Warrens went to look in on Laurie, they found her bed empty. And eight miles away... Are you sure you're not running away from home, young lady? Oh, no, sir. Well, then, uh, what are you doing in Weinstock if you live in New Channing, like you say? Visiting. On a school day? Uh, well, how come your folks didn't arrange to pick you up or have you brought? My papa can't leave the hardware store during business hours. Hardware store in New Channing? Yes, sir. Mason's Hardware and Feed Store. Mason, 
Colonel Mason, you're Paul? Yes, sir. Do you know him? Oh, yes, of course. We've had a lot of dealings. <laughs> your Paul's a mighty fine gentleman. Thank you. Ain't seen him around now in better than a month. Oh, yeah. Come to think of it. He does have a little girl about your age. What's your name? Alice. Alice, that's right. I remember now. Well, you give your Paul my best regards. Tell him Joe Fisher said hello. Thank you. I will. <laughs> When I see him, I'll give him a piece of my own mind. Let a pretty little thing like you wander around the countryside all by herself. What'd you say that address was again? 512 Old Street Avenue. Ah, well, we'll have you there in a the jiffy. Come on, boys. Get up. Come on. Oh, boy. Oh. There we are. Thanks for the ride, there, Mr. Fisher. That's all right. Now, you say hello to your paw. I will. Thank Goodbye. you. Goodbye. Get in. Elspeth, get me Chief Thompson, will you? I'm at my wit's end about Helen and Will. There's no improvement, no change. Not a word out of her, not a single word, not a sound. She just sits there in that chair. And it's been three weeks now, Will. She'll come around in time, Carl. Believe me, she will. Well, as soon as I hear anything about the girl, I'll let you know. <laughs> Alice was drowned, he howled all night long. And he just ran off, disappeared. This is the first time I've seen him in three weeks. Uh, oh, I must go to her. She needs me. Now, Helen, don't excite yourself. I'll call Carl and have him come right over to see you. But you don't understand. My little girl has come home. Oh, Julia, please let me go to her. Yes, Helen, I understand. Now, you just sit there while I call Carl. Now, you stay there, Helen. I'll be right back. All right. But hurry. I'll be right back. Please hurry. Alice. Let her sleep, dear. At least until the doctor comes. You think she still won't know us? <gasps> I don't know, Phil. She's been through an awful lot. So 
two of you. Hello. Uh, what? I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Julia. Speak up. I can't. I don't want her to hear me. Carl, she's begun talking. Yes, but you don't understand. It's not wonderful. She thinks Alice has come home. Well, what do you mean? What, what did she say? No, Julia, I, I don't think it's a good idea for her to come home. Not right now. But what shall I do? I can't keep her here when she insists on... All right, Carl. All right. Trouble, Carl. Helen, she started to talk again. Well, you see, I but it's what she's saying, that Alice has come home. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Carl. Well, if there's anything I can do, just get in touch. Helen! Where's my little girl? No, wait. I, I know she's here. Alice! Helen, wait, just Alice, wait. dear! Just Where a moment, are you? Helen. Alice! Alice! Oh, Alice! Baby, baby. Oh, Alice. I'm not your mother. You're not my child. My child is dead. My child is dead. My child is dead. It's dead. <laughs> Mama! Sorry. I don't care what he says. I won't leave her here. Now, Phyllis, the doctor knows better than we do what must be done. I don't care. She's my daughter. She's my daughter, too. Now, really, what are we going to do? Take her home and tie her to the bed? You know she'll come running back here again. No. When she wakes up, it'll all be gone. Like a bad dream. I hope so. I certainly hope so. Good morning. How about a cup of coffee? Mrs. Mason's preparing some breakfast. Oh, how is she? She's better. She had a good sleep. She'll be fine now, I'm sure. Good. Now, look, Phyllis, please listen to me. Good, George. Good morning. You must be exhausted. I guess we all are. She'll be all right. Will she? Come on in and sit down.
happened? I don't understand. You, you've been... You've been ill, darling. But it's, it's all right. It's going to be all right. You'll see. But I'm still your little girl, aren't I? Nothing's really changed, has it? I'm not changed inside. I'm still me, aren't I? Aren't I? Aren't I, Ma? Aren't I, Daddy? Yes, yes, Alice. You still love me, don't you? Like always. Oh, of course we love you, darling. Of course we love you. Oh, Mama, Mama. It's all right, darling. It's all right. And so Laurie Warren continued to live with the Masons as their daughter. There didn't seem to be anything else to do about the situation. Papa! Because Mommy had to go downtown, I get to make your lunch. Oh? Well, well. And, uh, is it good? Well, I made your favorite. You haven't had it in months and months. And what is that? Why, French toast and crisp bacon with maple syrup and canned peaches. Well, isn't that your favorite? Oh, yes. I think the breadwinner should be treated like a king in his own home. Always. You do. Yes, I do. And I've been making a surprise for you for your birthday next Monday. Only I'm afraid it's not going to be a surprise any longer. I've got to measure it on you and see if I made it big enough. I'll be back in a minute. Well? October. Third or fourth week in October. Third or fourth week in October. Oh. Those doctors are beginning to think they can call the dates just the way a farmer figures his harvesting season. He didn't really go out on a limb and say whether it'll be a boy or a girl, did he? Oh, Carl. Something good. Something very, very good. And that's the way it happened. Laurie never recalled a moment of the time she lived as Alice Mason. Apparently, the spirit of Alice Mason inhabited the body of Laurie Warren for a time. At any rate, whatever did happen, it served a purpose, a good purpose. And as odd and inexplicable as it may be, Laurie's strange adventure was not the first time this sort of purposeful possession has occurred, nor was it the last. As a matter of fact, nobody could say it won't happen tomorrow to you. <laughs> 